Alright guys, I've got a software review for you again today. Uh, the software I'm reviewing today is called WinX DVD Ripper, and this is the Platinum version. Uh, basically, to get right into it, what this software does, and you can see a little bit from their website here, uh, it backs up or rips any DVDs that you have. Um, and that includes ISOs. So basically what you can do is take a DVD or an ISO that you've created personally. Um, it also works with commercial or what you would call a, a mainstream DVD um, to make up backups or uh, rips of those as well. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the website here, but I just did want to show you, and I will put the link for the site in the description. Um, it, there's a couple different versions they have and a couple of different recommended products, but to get right into uh, the DVD Ripper, um, you can come to the website here and it will kind of give you a brief overview of all the features and the functionality of it and, and kind of exactly what it can do and some of the technology that they have behind it. Um, but I think rather what I'm going to show you is just show you the program itself. So you can see I have it here running. Um, basically there are a whole bunch of different settings that you can play with to get this thing to work exactly how you like or if there's something you'd like to tweak. Um, but I'd say for 99% of the users out there, you're simply going to um, take your DVD and just simply start and run it as you can see the big run button. So what I'm going to do is uh, insert a DVD into my computer. So this is actually a physical DVD. It's not an ISO and it's not a digital DVD. And I'm just going to let it boot up here. And so then what you'll go ahead and do is click on disk once you've had your disk inserted. And then it will pull up and here's my VLC trying to play the DVD. So you can see it is a real a real DVD that I inserted. So what you do is we want to just go ahead and select the DVD we want. And this is where it's going to come into the customization and exactly see what all kinds of features are available. So first of all you see um, the, uh, what, what, what is the output that you'd want to put it in? What format do you want to put in? Uh, most people, I think, when they're ripping DVDs, they just want to put it in AVI. Um, a lot of devices can handle MP4s, which is a little bit better. Um, but basically, you go down here on the left-hand side, and this is where I really like this software because it's really intuitive and it's really easy to use. Um, basically, what you could do is if, say, I wanna, I'm going to go on a trip and I want to rip this DVD and watch it on my Android tablet. So basically, I come down here and I see where do, what do I have? An Android pad, so a tablet. So I click the Android tablet tab, and then it will take me here to a list of uh, Android devices. So basically, what you do is go down and pick the device that you have or what would be closest to it. So actually, what I might do is I'm going to, uh, instead of my tablet on this trip, I'm going to take my phone. So I'm going to click Android Mobile. And then the closest one I have here would probably be the HTC Mobile. So then you can go on here and choose a little bit more in detail of exactly what you'd like to change with it or what kind of settings you'd like to choose. I'm going to leave everything on default because I think for most users that's going to be satisfactory. So we'll just click OK. And then you can go in here and you can see you can actually just do certain uh, scenes or certain features of it. And we'll just, for this, like I said, I'm just going to leave it blank. The first one was going to do the whole DVD for us. Uh, you can see subtitles are disabled if I want to put the English subtitle on there, if that is pre-encoded in the DVD or, or uh, if it's an ISO, if you have the subtitle file, you can do that. So I'm going to turn the subtitles on. And then basically, there are some other options you can get into, but like I said, there's nothing really that is needed. The only thing you might want to choose is if you have a really limited... Uh, or you have really limited resources as far as computer hardware, you can change the core usage down to one or two or three. It'll just run a little bit slower and the quality might lack a little bit. I'm gonna leave it on four, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click run. So now you can see this process actually doesn't take all that long. Um, it, to, just to get started and when it analyzes this at first, it will take a couple minutes. But you can see there's just a couple options here. The first one is shut down computer when the conversation or the conversion is completed. So usually I don't I don't do that because I don't want my computer to shut off. But maybe if you were going to do this before you go to bed, uh, it could be worth you know just choosing that option, go to bed, and then you know your computer shuts off. Um, the other one that's on by default is to open the output folder when the conversion is completed. I usually leave that on just because. I'm going to end up opening it anyway, and you're just going to want to test it. But you can see it's already up to 3%. Um, they advertise that um, they have a mode, and I don't know if it's the default mode, but it only takes up to five minutes to burn a DVD. 
or I'm sorry, to rip a DVD. Um, so you can see it, it is pretty quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause my video for just a minute or two and let this finish up. And then as soon as it finishes, I want to um, show you guys the example ripping the, the AVI that I let it rip to. So we'll kind of just leave it for now and I'll come back in a couple minutes. Alrighty, so I actually have to apologize in advance. I wanted to uh, resume the video recording at the, right at the end of the process here but it actually ripped so quickly that I didn't have a chance to. So I, I will admit that I'm actually fairly impressed at how, how quickly it ripped. It was just over five minutes. So what they advertise is correct. So once I just want to show you here the finalization of the process. So it's actually finished ripping completely. So we just want to click OK. And then because we left that setting on to open up the file, it's going to uh, open up my Windows Explorer file here and show me exactly where the the, the finished output file is located. So we can come in here and open it. And so you can see by default the resolution is very small and that is actually on purpose because that's what I chose for my device was my Android phone. So you can expand it a little bit and the, the res... I'm going to turn it down a little bit here. The resolution is uh, it's smaller but it's definitely not unwatchable. Um, and you can see we hard-coded in those subtitles, so the subtitles are always going to be in, are included in this video file whenever you watch it. Um, but basically, so what you do, and I'll show you how to do an alternative version of that. So if we want to come back in here, we can actually ch go in here and manually change the settings. So if I want to start out by this HTC Mobile, the general format, you can come in here and change everything from the bit rate. You can change the aspect ratio if you know you want it widescreen or you don't want it widescreen. Um, you can change the frames per second. You can change the resolution itself. So there is a lot you can do with it, um, but uh, like I said at the beginning, there's not a whole lot that you need to change. Um, if you want to go back, you can, like if I want to do an Android tablet, you can set it that and you'll see the uh, the frames look like they stayed the same, but I think the resolution, oh, so it's just going to keep the original resolution on that, which is going to make it a little higher. So there is quite a bit of customization that you can do. Um, but like I said, for the most part, I think just putting it in and choosing AVI and just running it to rip it is going to be, uh, is going to fit all the needs that you do, that you're going to be required as far as like just backing up the DVD or making an extra copy or whatever it is that you need to do with it. Um, so I definitely would recommend this software. Uh, it works flawlessly and very quickly. Um, you can come to their website here. It's just winxdvd.com, and this specific product is is forward slash DVD dash Ripper dash Platinum. Um, I will put the link for that in the in the description. Um, you can come here and see it is usually sixty dollars, but they have it on sale for only thirty nine dollars. Um, and I kind of to kind of justify the price in my head. I always think as a, a DVD is going to be at least fifteen or twenty dollars, and to back that DVD up. Um, so you have an exact copy of it. It's only going to take two and a half DVDs and you're going to make your money back right away. So if you are interested in having several backups of DVDs or backups of several or several DVDs themselves, um, I think it's definitely worth it. As long as you're going to do at least two DVDs, it's, it's going to pay for itself right away. So I'll go ahead and put the link in the description and uh, go ahead and check it out, guys. And if you have any questions, let me know where they have a great team of support. Uh, on their website here. You can come here. They have some FAQs and user guides. Um, definitely check it out if you have any questions and, and uh, I think you really enjoy it.